guys. So um, today I'm gonna be filming with my daughter. We're just gonna do a um, get ready with me. I haven't filmed with my daughter in a while, so it was kind of nice when she said, hey, do you wanna film a get ready with me? And I was like, yeah, let's do that. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're just gonna do a full face of getting ready and just kind of chit chatting and you know, that's what we're gonna do. So this is Carmen, if you don't know. She's Hi. obviously a little bit older than the last time she filmed with me. It's been a while since you filmed with me, Carm. I know. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my normal stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and spray my face with the Urban Decay Quick Fix. I love this stuff. Oh, do we have to tell them everything we use? Yeah. Oh, okay, well, do you want to spray I don't do that, no. No, you don't? It's I really don't. nice. I really don't. Okay. I have a routine, Mom. Okay. It's a really shitty one. Sure, works. your routine works. Okay, um, I am going in with the Pore Professionals uh, Matte Rescue. And I'm gonna start off with the photo finish. Do you wanna know something funny? Primer. I just realized how hard this is to be using my nails. Yeah. You just how hard literally my entire life is about to be. My daughter just got her nails done and so she's... Well, they're like insanely long. And they're not that not what long. I wanted. They're not that long. They're long, but they're not insanely long. They're insanely so long. So what I do with the professionals, I just put it all over my face, rub it in, and get all my face primed before I start with anything else. Then I'm gonna go in with the soft cover pro, or soft cover Pore. Pore Balm, Balm Primer. I, that's like a tongue twister for me. And this is from, um, what is it? Bi Biotanic. Biotanic Farms. So basically this is just like a, it's like a solid and you just gotta stick your finger in there, which, which I hate doing, <laughs> but this does fill in your pores really well. Um, I also use the um, Photo Finish Pore Filler from Smashbox. And I like that just as well. This one does give you a little bit more than the trial size that I normally buy from Smashbox, but for me, use some. yeah, sure. For me, they both do the some same strings. thing. Um, this one does have some really good ingredients in it, and um, the Smashbox one, I don't know as far as the ingredients go. So how much do I use? Like enough? You need more than that. And you just like you don't want it all over your face, just in your pores. Like, see how you have like these little, like little, um, you know. The there dots? you go. Yeah, the dots. See how it filled that in? No, I can't see. Yeah, it completely filled that in. See what I mean? Oh, okay. So it just will fill in the dots that you have on your face. And I have some pretty big pores, so I like to pat it into the areas where I have pretty big pores. Okay, I don't even know this was a thing. Yeah. This would be good for anybody that has piercings that they've taken out, you know, and have a hole in their I face have a or whatever. Hole, like, right in the middle of my lip that yeah. I took a piercing out. Yeah, and then you just push that in there and then it kind of fills in that portion. So, and it does the same thing with your pores, but on a, you know, smaller basis. I plan on repiercing it eventually. Do you? Next, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to be using the um, Real Techniques. Do you want to use the Real Techniques or the Baby Builder? Oh, that one. Okay. I'll be using the, the Real Techniques because my daughter is going what to are you, use are you doing Baby Builder. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to do the eyebrows. Okay. She's going to do her eyebrows and she's going to go in with... Uh, the Cabra by Benefit. Yeah, and it, what color is that? It should be at the bottom. Four. Number four, yeah. I think it's like a dark brown or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm going to go in with my favorite foundation, and it's going to be from Fenty. I always go over the top of my eyes with my foundation, and then afterwards, I'll definitely go in with my eyeshadow primer. The reason why I do that is because my eye, t my top of my eyelids are a little bit discolored from the rest of my face, and so if I don't put the foundation on my eyelids the way I do the rest of my face, even if I go in with a shadow, you can see the difference in color on the skin that's showing from the shadow, so I don't like the way that looks. Now I'm gonna go in with the Ulta Beauty Color Correcting Liquid Concealer. This is a waterproof concealer, and it's in the color Peach. I um, showed this on a recent uh, unboxing that uh, I wanted to try it because it had like a doe foot on it, and I really do like it. I put them against each other. Um, the Benefit uh, Boeing Light Concealer, or uh, Lightning Concealer, um, which is also a peach concealer for your under eyes, and they, basically worked the same. This is a lot cheaper, so I will continue to use the one from Benefit until I use it up, but I do prefer this because of the doe foot. And I'm just dotting it under my eyes, as you can see, just to get rid of that darkness that's there. And I will put it on certain areas, oh, that's okay, it's fine, <laughs> on my face that has like, you know, where I have some dark marks from acne scars. Then I'm gonna take the pointy side of my, ble my Real Techniques blender, and I'm gonna blend that out. And I will take that all the way up on the eye as well because I want everything to look kind of uniform in that area. So I will take it everywhere that I have. So um, I'm using the Tarte Shape Tape in light medium and I'm gonna use that and a uh, like angled brush to uh, carve out my eyebrows. Mainly just, I just and like you can this. see it blends really, really nicely. Next I'm gonna go in with the Naked Skin by Urban Decay Concealer. I have this color in 
medium light. I really like this. I purchased this as well on my last video of unboxing. I wanted something that was kind of lighter weight but wouldn't crease as much and I do like the fact that this doesn't crease as much and this is actually really close to my skin color so it doesn't do a lot about lightening anything but it does a really good job of concealing things um, and I like that about this. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that pointed side of my blender again and just blend that out. And again, I'm taking that on the lid as well. Usually when I carve out my eyebrows is when I put the concealer on my eyelids. Is it? Mm -hmm. I never um, have taken the time to carve out the eyebrows. Do you like doing that? or? Uh, well, basically, I have a big old scar in this eyebrow, so when I like do my eyebrows, if I don't carve them out, you can like the, the, you can see the, the scar. scar is like more prominent. Right. So. I mean, it might just be to me. A lot of people don't even realize I have a scar, but I know I it's there. It. I was so mad when she got that. I, I told them to go to bed, and her and her brother decided to jump on the bed. She nicked her eyebrow on what? No, Carlos headbutted me. Okay, well, her brother headbutted her. They were so young, and I was—I told my husband, I was just like, "Oh my God, she's just ruined her eyebrows because now she has this like scar running through her eyebrows." I was so upset. I mean, I—I I was upset that she was bleeding, but my first initial thought was, "Oh my God, her eyebrow," which is. I don't know. I don't know if that's good or bad, but that's like what my thought was. It's okay. Now, <laughs> now I'm really hating myself for allowing him to headbutt me on accident. So. <laughs> when I told him to go to bed, she's wishing that she would have went to bed, I'm assuming, right? So, as you can see, I'm um, just really working that product under my eyes, getting all the excess off so I don't have a lot of crepiness and it doesn't look over product down there. So I will go over this for uh, quite a bit, and then I'm going to let it set after I do that. But it does look really rather nice. As you can see, it's kind of lightning, but you can still see the creases in my eyes, you know, under my eyes. I do have creases under there because I'm old. But it does help by putting on that color corrector first and then going in with your um, concealer. It does help to take that darkness from under my eyes, which I do have. Okay. She's going in with like boots number butter. seven in the, what is it, Stay Perfection? Stay Perfect. Stay Perfect. And it, what color is that? Warm Beige. I've talked about that before on the favorites. It's I one really of my like favorites, it. too. The only thing I really am not a fan of is it smells like peanut butter. It does kind of smell like peanut butter, which is so weird, right? It is so weird. I also just feel like your foundations are really dark for me. Well, I'm a little bit darker than you are. All right, I'm going to go in with the um, Cody Airspun to set that under eye area. So I'm going to go in with the Real Techniques Small Precise Blending Tool. I don't know what this is called. I'm going to go ahead and run it over the bottom of my eyes again and this is also dampened so just so you know all my sponges are dampened and are you know full expand fully expanded when I use them so um, it for me it just takes off excess product and it just helps my eye looks and my face looks look a little bit more like it's a part of my my face and not like I'm wearing a lot of makeup at the end of the day I'm just gonna take a lot of that product right here on the blender and then I'm just gonna push it into the skin there I'm gonna try to avoid my under eye as much as possible, but I will get that with the excess afterwards. So now I'm gonna go in and just use it just lightly and then the same thing with the top of my lid as well. So at that point, I'm just gonna leave it like that and you can see that it did lighten up and that lighten, lightening effect will kind of stay there when I brush away the excess powder off my face. I mean, I obviously have to do my neck, but does that look okay? Besides my neck, don't yeah, you can always take a brush too if if you feel like you have too much on, and or you can take another blender or you know a tissue and rub it, you know, like pat it on your face to take off excess foundation or whatever. Mm -hmm. And let me see, and then uh, look up here. That will help blend it out a little bit, and then it won't look you know cakey if you feel like you put too much on. Because sometimes you can go in and not even be thinking, you know, just going through the motions and put on too much, you know. But if you continue to... God, you pat so hard. I'm sorry. If you continue to pat your face, it will take off excesses amount, an excess amount of foundation, which is really nice, you mm -hmm. know? Oh, I'm sorry, your nose. Oh! <laughs> I forgot about your sensitive nose. It's not sensitive. It's just recently had a needle shoved through it, so... I like to mutilate my face. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. The more you blend out your foundation, the more it becomes part of your face. So if you have the time to sit there and blend it for a good long time, I, I highly suggest and that you do that. Most of the time I don't. Yeah, you don't normally. You're in a rush half the time. And most of the time I just don't put makeup on, so. Yeah, she doesn't wear makeup like every day like I do. All right, um, from there I go in with uh, the Tarte Shape Tape in uh, light medium just to conceal my face. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and start doing my eyebrows. So I won't be talking. I'll probably be 
uh, fast forwarding through this so I'm going in with the Anastasia gel first I did end up picking up the one from Essence um, I don't know how I feel about this it doesn't really it, it doesn't not hold my brows in place but it doesn't feel stiff like the Anastasia one does so I'm, I'm still on the fence with this one but it is a good product but I don't know it just feels super lightweight and I do like a stiffer setting brow gel than than the one from on from essence but it's not a bad one brows. you don't no. i have to set them because i you have like have... a billion steps and i'm just like well i just put my foundation on and i go from there to concealer and then i bake and i bake for like i do have seconds, a lot of steps and i'm good to go i'm not gonna lie i do have a lot of steps i'm gonna go in with the anastasia beverly hills uh brow dip and uh, pomade in dark brown and i'm also going to be using one of their brushes from anastasia it's just a smaller one that came with the powder and then after my concealer, I immediately go in with the peach powder. I don't use any other powder. I honestly It's such a good powder, isn't it? I, I wouldn't know. Basically, I use it because it smells good. But does it not work for you? I mean, I'm not really sure what the point of baking is, if I'm being honest. Well, if you have oily skin, it's, you know, it does help out to keep the oils at bay. But it does help the longevity of your foundation throughout the day. So that's basically what it's for. I'm going to go ahead and use my Tarte. Play play. I'm going to be using the color Desert to sculpt. And I'm just using an e.l.f. You know what's funny is I do that brush. Do you? Mm -hmm. I like bounce around. This one's mine, right? Yeah, that's yours. What is it? Well, it's a Morphe palette, but I'm not sure if I'm going to use it. But it's the Fall Into Frost. And it's the 365 uh, 30, F. Basically, shout out to Trish for getting me that for Christmas. Oh, I'm like making a mess. I still have... I, I did that... My daughter I bought think me. I might use this one now. Yeah, you can use whichever one you want. Which is the 3502, which is the second nature palette from Morphe. My daughter bought me a mask. What was it called? I don't know. I just know it was holographic. It was it's holographic. Not holographic. It's iridescent. It's definitely iridescent. But I used it today. It's supposed to um, help with moisture. It does definitely make my feel my face feel pretty moisturized. But I I'm still like finding little pieces in my hair from it. Yeah. What brush are you using? Is that one of the new ones? Morphe it is. M441. Oh no, that's not one of the new ones. I did get some new Morphe brushes. So, when you give me that, when you're done, will you give me that blush palette over there? I'm gonna go in with the Tarte Blush Bliss palette. And just a fluffy brush from Moda. And I'm gonna use Lovable and Genuine. Genuine. I'm mixing those together. So, are you going to be taking online courses then? Uh, that's my plan, yeah. Um, I checked through the University of Wyoming, and they offer my entire degree that I wanted to go for mm -hmm. online, so that's what my... Which is? Uh, psychology. Psychology. Yeah, I have, like, a passion with working with people with uh, intellectual disabilities. That's actually what I'm doing right now. Um, so, I would like to just... Like, You've been working for, with them for, like, what, two years now? Yeah, going on two years. And uh, I would like to continue in on, like, in on in that field, but, like, I think I would like to do more of, like, the higher-up things. Right. If that makes any sense. Yes, it to totally does. All right, want to pick me a palette out, out of there? It doesn't matter, an eyeshadow palette. I don't care what you pick me out, just pick me up. We're both, mo okay, we're both using Morphe. So I'll be using the Dare to Create palette. Okay, I'm going to be going in with the Morphe 441 brush and I'm going to be going into um, a light color first to set my eyes. Actually, gosh, I'm not even thinking. I will be. I literally didn't even tell you guys what color I used. Using an eye primer. I, I using, well, there's not like a name under them. But, my primer from Wet n Wild. Uh, the color I have on my lids right now are a mixture between these two right here. Yeah, you can't even see it. Mixture between these two right here. So that's what I'm using. I'm, I'm going to go in with this lighter color here on the end uh, as a transition first. I honestly forgot we even had this palette. Oh, I used it not too long ago. It's so pretty. I think I used it for the... Um, it's the Manny MUA palette with Makeup Geek. I used it for... This one? Yeah. The Valentine's look. Valentine. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. Manny and Mue. It's hmm. a really pretty palette. It has really nice colors in it. If you haven't used Makeup Geek shadows, they're they're really nice, huh, baby? I like their highlighters. Yeah, their highlighters. I mean, I used to be like hella into their highlighters. Like that's all I used was the two highlighters that we have by them. But I've slowly started to get back into like Anastasia. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have so much, you can just go back and forth to what you well, want. Well, mainly because like if. Right, like this right here is like sometimes I'll just do my foundation and I'll put like a brown on the lid, but I won't go like hardcore. So there's like no eyeliner, and I'll just like use like a little bit of like uh, mascara, and I'll just call it a day. Right. So like using the thing is I'll never not wear highlighter. 
So I'll use like neutral, like ones that match my skin tone instead of going like, I want to blind you. Right. If that makes any sense. I'm not really into the whole blinding no. highlighter myself. I am. I know you are. I mean, I think it looks really, really good on the younger people, um, you know, like your age and even 30s, but I'm in my 40s. I'm 40. And I just feel like it just looks, you know, I like highlighter. I just like it, you know, to be subtle, to just be like there, but not, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm going to go really subtle today with my look. I'm gonna go ahead and go into a brown color, a darker brown color, so I'm gonna go into the one right next to it here, which is gonna be just another darker brown. I might mix it with another brown that's in there just to get a little bit darker, and I'm gonna go right into the crease. Still using the same brush from Morphe, and I'm taking it down to the V as well. I'm gonna go in with the Morphe M33, M433. It's kind of a flatter shader brush, as you can see, but it does have like kind of, kind of a bigness. It's really mm -hmm. nice if you wanna use like shimmers and stuff mm -hmm. to kind of sheer out a shimmer on your eye. So yeah, anytime I use a shimmer, I actually don't even use a brush. I use my fingers. Do you? Yeah. I've got I makeup everywhere. Me. The NYX glitter glue. Mm -hmm. It's like my holy grail. And then I just use my fingers. Yeah, the glitter glue is really. I don't nice. know how that's gonna work out today with these claws that I have on, but right. we'll see. I'm gonna take a shimmer from another palette. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of these lighter colors up here and then put that in the center of my eye. Second lighter color in the palette. I'm just gonna push that into my eye. Yeah, my daughter does not visit me as much as she should. And when she does, she stays and talks okay. to the boys. All right, so we went to lunch. Our husband, my husband brought us some food, so we, we took a break real quick. I was in the middle of doing my eyeshadow. So was I. <clears throat> I should probably take my dress to light off. So I was using the Morphe 3F, 35F, and I'm using the shimmer color here for my the center of my eyes. I was also using Morphe. I don't remember what I was doing. <laughs> I know, we had to eat. I was starving. We just got in a heated debate. Yes. Conspiracy theories, So let's theories, talk about that. Shall we? What is your thoughts? On what? On, on what we were just talking about. Like, the new, the new information that just came out about the aliens that are supposed to be taking over on the 28th of April? The 18th. The 18th of April. I don't think that's true. You don't? I don't think that's true. You don't think I don't that? think it's true at all. I do believe we are, like... Literally smaller than this brush top right here on the spectrum of like galaxies and everything So I don't believe that we're the only ones I'm just going living. back in with the light color that I was using But I don't blood. believe that those fools are gonna come on the 18th and we're all gonna die like I think that's stupid But what do you think about what was said and if, if you guys don't know there was apparently Some information that leaked from a box of an airplane flight that crashed in Malaysia two years ago, right? Is that what it was? I think it was two years ago. I think it was two years ago. It might have been, you know, a little bit less or more, but it was around two years ago. <clears throat> and they're saying that they found the box, and the box apparently had some SOS information saying that um, we're in danger, they're not alive. That they encountered something unhuman. Yeah. Uh, you know, take, take heed, we're in danger, they're not alive. And so, <clears throat> there was this big thing on Facebook yesterday, started what, Saturday? Aliens. <laughs> started Saturday. Well, I think it probably started a little longer than that. Maybe it did. Probably just like caught wind. Just but, now. people have said that they have the information from the black box, they found the black box, blah blah blah, and it says it's SOS and that they're supposed to be coming and that we're supposed to take, what, precaution? Or something? Basically, there was like a whole decoded thing, and then like the decoded, it brought that whole SOS, like there's danger, we're encountering something unhuman, and then it's just again like SOS, there's danger, and then like it gave you coordinates, and then the coordinates are basically like where like the basically like the, the um, the what's it called disappeared, the, the plane, and then um, it gave you like, a, like basically like the date, like who. Oh, 4 18, 18 basically saying that, like whatever the hell they encountered is gonna make itself known. My thoughts are with the recent stuff that Stephen Hawkins said about that asteroid that apparently is coming towards our our solar system, mm -hmm. and him saying that it it's not it's not an asteroid and it looks more like a ship. If you guys don't know who Stephen Hawkins is, he Hawkins is that what his name is? Stephen Hawkins. Hawkins, I think. He is one of the smartest people on Earth. He just recently passed away. But he did say that that ship-like form that is coming towards us does not look like an asteroid. That it looks like a ship. If he, in his opinion, it's a ship. And that we should just be aware. Be aware that he thinks it's a ship and not, not an asteroid. Um, with that being said, 
I feel like some of the stuff that's coming out may be, may be true. Nah. You don't think so? I don't think that, like, everyone's freaking out, like, my... I'm just going in with the darker I color. I say she's thought. my sister, but she's really not my sister, but, um, Maria, she's, like, basically, like, a cousin, technically, right? Yeah, she's your cousin. But, yeah, she, uh, was over here freaking out, and, like, oh, my God, the aliens are gonna kill us, so we're gonna die, and I'm, like, no, they're really not. You have to think, like, my personal belief is, um, the pyramids... There's no way we didn't have any help with any of that. The technology and how fast our technology grew within like the last like 30 years. Like there's no way that we didn't have like a head start with that. Like, I don't know. That's just my personal opinion. I think that the aliens have basically my opinion is what's going to happen is the aliens helped build us up. We're basically destroying what they helped build. So they're eventually going to come back and take back and basically just like wipe us out and start us over. But hopefully I'm long and dead by that point. <laughs> Is that what your thoughts are? That's what my thought is, yeah. You don't think that they're just not using I mean, us? Like, casually I mean, come on, screen. You don't think that the aliens don't see us as like a science experiment? No. And are just seeing what we do and how we, you know, grow and become... I mean, I'm sure they probably have done this like other places, but like, I don't know. I just if you don't believe in aliens, then that's okay. I th Our family does. <laughs> You're very, very shallow-minded to not. I'm using aliens. the Morphe M three one three two one. It's a small little. How can you brush. genuinely, people like, if you don't believe in aliens? And I would love you to comment so I can actually comment back and we can have like a civil conversation about it. But like civil how, conversation. Yeah, like literal civil. Like I'm not gonna be mean, but I'm just curious, like on how people don't genuinely believe in aliens. Like we are like literally the tiniest thing on like a little dot on the spectrum of galaxies that are out there. How do you genuinely believe we're the only like living being like living beings? I don't. I don't understand it. Right. I, I totally agree. We're, we, we, there's, there's a no few way. people in our immediate family that genuinely don't believe in aliens. I'm like, why? I don't understand. I genuinely don't I'm get it. Nice. I'm almost done. I'm not. No? I mean, <clears throat> I just think that you have to have an open mind that there's other things out there in the universe that that could possibly come here, you know? And at some point, either take over or be helpful or, you know, I do, be I personally believe that the government knows about them and they're aware of them and they're okay with them being here, but because they don't want to make like mass hysteria. So anyways, if you guys want to open up a discussion about aliens, that's great. We can, we can totally do that. I'm going to go in with a red blush color from Essence and I'm going in with the Wet n Wild and Behind the Bleachers lipstick. I would love for like your subscribers, if they believe in conspiracy theories, just to comment and tell us what conspiracy theories you guys actually believe in because I love to like read about new ones. I'm gonna go in with the tattoo liner in Mad Max Brown. But I also think there's like some outlandish um, conspiracy theories like the Illuminati. <laughs> I believe that the Illuminati is an actual thing like how Linda is like, how she's just like, on all the, the rich people and they're sacrificing someone to become rich and I don't think that's actually a true thing. You don't, you don't believe it's actually The Illuminati is an actual thing. The Illuminati is a literal thing. Like it's, like it's proven, like the Illuminati is there. It's just, it was just like a prestigious club for rich people, but I don't think people have to sacrifice people to get into it. Like, and I don't really think it's really that big of a thing now. But that's just me. I'm going in with a light eyeliner from Makeup Geek. I'm just lining my lower rim. And I'm gonna go in with my Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara, which this is gonna be on the 21 Days of Beauty from Ulta if you guys are wanting to try this. I think it's gonna be like $12, and I think it's at the end, the, one of the last, um, Cells that's going on. Are you gonna get it? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably pick up a couple of them I'm also gonna be picking up some setting sprays. What are your Theories on Ghosts, how do you feel about that? <sighs> well considering the last part we lived in I got scratched in the face by something that wasn't there. I absolutely believe in the paranormal And how do you feel about people that discredit that? You think that just they don't have an experience with it, so they they don't n know any different, or what do you think the? Yeah, I would say that. I also think it kind of falls back on what people believe in too, like religion. Yeah. Which, like, again, I'm not trying to discredit religion, because, like, do you? I, I just like I'm just like not one of those people that are, but like I'm not trying to discredit you for being, you know what I mean? But uh, I think a lot of it, like. It's not what, like, my grandparents, like, say. They're huge Catholics. Right. And they don't believe in any of that. But they don't also discredit me for believing in it, I guess. Like, right. I'm trying to say. But I absolutely believe that goes through a thing. I mean, we ourselves as a family have dealt with some pretty crazy things. Um, things that, like, have happened directly in front of us that we genuinely can't, like... Explain. Yeah, like, we can't, like, 
that we can't find like any kind of like smart like or like valuable explanation as to how it happened. Like again, like I got literal like I went with my dog. I'm done. Had, like my dog had jumped off the bed, and I had went and I had like put him back on the bed, and I turned around and I literally like got like from like my ear all the way down to my mouth like scratched. Have no idea how the hell that happened, but it happened. Right. Right. <sighs> what are your thoughts, Sabrina? Oh, I believe in ghosts. I just I believe that there's you know spirits out there that are good and then there's you know spirits out there that are bad you know the yin and the yang of you know the afterlife you know i just feel like like when we would have our experiences i would just tell you guys to ignore it that way you weren't scared but you know they were always really shocking when we'd leave the house we would have to make sure that we unplugged everything from the walls made sure there was nothing on the stove because at some point when we'd come home things would be on that were not on when we left you know uh, when we moved out from that last part i think it was like when we moved out from the last apartment to move into the second apartment before we moved here uh we found like a ghost hunting manual that right. never belonged to us yeah it, it was really there weird. the entire time we moved like we lived there like we've been in and out of that closet a billion times but when we moved out there it was like just a like, no idea where it came and from and we had we had you know just rooms that would just grow mold out of nowhere which was really weird um and the landlords you know which is why they moved us a couple of times because it happened in two different apartments that we lived in that were both kind of a little haunted. You know, that the mold was growing in the apartment area where there wasn't any water, like any water pipes running through it. So it was kind of weird for them to to say, you know, we don't know where this mold is coming from. Right. Like it's just growing out of nowhere. So, and then, you know, we'd have some weird stuff happening, like doors would slam, you know. There was the time like me and my stepdad, uh, you guys have met a bit, me and my stepdad were sitting on the couch and like we had our computer set up in the hallway and we had like a computer chair like she's sitting on and we were just like sitting there talking and it like literally like seemed like someone slammed into it and like and it, it turned around, and yeah. in my bedroom, a lot of it happened in my bedroom too because my bedroom door like slammed. And I believe, like, strongly believe something is going on in my closet because, like, way back when I was little, my grandparents got us these really cool gifts, and I honestly wish I would have kept it, but... What was it? <laughs> uh, it was, like, this little, like, fuzzy, like... Like, it was kind of like a, bit, like a little monster thing, but it was, like, oh, cool, uh, and you would smack it, and it would sing, like, a song, and it would bounce all over the place. Well, oh, I had it, like, set up, like, because, like, we had walk-in closets in that, like, apartment building. And, um, I would, I set it up, like, on the top part of my, like, my walk-in closet in the middle of the night, and it would just go off and bounce, so I threw that thing away. By itself? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because, like, genuinely, for it to work, you would have to, like, literally, like, smack into it, and, like, yeah, no, it would just go off, and I was like, cool, well, I'm not keeping it, because I don't have time for that. <laughs> I don't have time for that. No, one time, uh, you know, before our dog passed away, we, we now have three other dogs, but this is a dog that we've had when the kids were really, really young. And so he was laying on our bed with us, and uh, it was probably about three or maybe two to three in the morning, and he just got up and started grilling at the door. Well, at I that like point... I like talking about this story. Yeah. Well, at that point, my husband was awake. I wasn't awake at the time, and he, you know, nudged me, and you could hear somebody walking the hallways outside of our door. Singing. It sounded like an old, like a, a mother. It had to have been a mother because it, it was like a lullaby. Like she was singing a lullaby, like humming a lullaby, like, mm -hmm, you know, and it was kind of freaky. And my dog, you know, you know when dogs get scared or they, you know, they, they their fur like stands up and he, he's a big pit bull. And so he was just like guarding us at our bed and just like growling at the door, like ready for something to come in. It was well, we've really had things weird. things happen at this house like that too. Like my right. own story, this like this room that we're sitting in was originally my bedroom, and um, like exactly where we are, where it was like my bed was, and we still we have a pit now. His name is Rigby. He's a cute little thing, mm -hmm. but he slept with me when I lived here, and um, there was no one else in the house. I didn't have work that day, so I woke up around like maybe like. 10-ish, 11-ish, and like I woke up and he was standing on top of me and he was just like growling at my door. And I was like, well, what the hell? And I was like, dude, like get off me. And I went to like push it and he just like looked at me and like immediately turned right back to my door and started growling. And I was like, what the hell? So I was like sitting there and all you hear is like work boots. Like the only way like I can- Like stomping make, on the ground. Like the only way I can describe it was just like steel toe boots. Like, you know, like when you step on like hardwood flooring and like- Which we have hardwood yeah. flooring. So and it literally was like stomping like to like my room and it was like coming towards me. And so I was just like, well, Mitch wears like my stepdad, like he wears work boots. So I called him and I was like still quiet and I was like, hey, are you home? And he's like, no. And I was like, well, then there's someone in the house. <laughs> I was like, and I like freaked out because I was like, there's someone here. So he like was like right down and the street. And Ricky was reacting to like, it Like, and as he well. was like freaking out, like ready to attack whatever is going to come to that door. So I called him and like he came and he checked the whole house. He checked all the locks, like all the doors were locked. Nothing was here, but there was someone or something coming at my door and I was not for it. Right. When I was, uh, you know, a while back when I Whatever it Bella, is, yeah. follows us. Yeah, like, it definitely everywhere. follows us. For, uh, and you know, 
which is why I wanted to start like a ghost series on my channel because we've had a lot of weird stuff happen to us and where we live in Wyoming a lot of people don't know about Wyoming very much but there's a lot of history when it comes to Wyoming and there's a lot of Indian you know supernatural grounds. supernatural history here as well I genuinely think the the apartments that Grandma and Linda used to live in, that what a stagecoach? I think those are like built on the They're definitely, yeah. You know, I genuinely do. Like because, you know, the, the settlers or whatever, not settlers, but you know, pilgrims, whatever, I don't know what it was called. Can't change your mind on What they're called, but they used to, you know, travel from from Utah to the rock. I don't know what the hell it's called. I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not very versed on it yet. But, you know, and back in, back in the 1800s when that used to happen, when people would pass away, they would literally bury them where they passed away when they were traveling through through Wyoming, you know, and a lot of that happened within, you know, the Rollins area and the Laramie area where we live. And so there's a lot of history in Wyoming. So I thought it would be kind of cool to talk about ghost stories in a video. I'm still trying to work it out, but. I'd say a lot of us in like, especially in our family have like things like my older brother saw something hopping from roof to roof here, like in this town. With that being he said. He still can't talk about it. Like he's no. With that being said, Raymond does not believe in ghosts. He's my an son, atheist. He's an atheist. He doesn't believe in, in anything like that. So when he's seen that, it really freaked him out. He was with my husband. They were going to Wendy's or McDonald's or something to get dinner or something like that. And on the way home, he was, you know, sitting in the passenger seat and he told my husband, he said, oh my God, I seen something hopping from the roof to roof. Now, in the apartments that we lived in, they were pretty high, probably about what? <sighs> they're high. Like, I don't know, they're they're three stories high, two stories high. Two. Two but stories there was high. Like like yeah it's like two like houses basically yeah like, so on top, on top of, of each, each other. other so they're pretty high buildings and so when we're when they were driving back he literally like panicked and like grabbed onto my husband and said oh my god i just seen something hopping from one building to the next and my husband you know stopped which i don't know why he would stop i mean when you watch scary movies curious, you always run away from a, it not run towards it he's a curious being right and probably then, honestly would have done the same thing and i would have stopped him and like well i want to see what's going right, on right right so he stopped and then my my son I'm almost done. Literally, you know, freaked out and grabbed the steering wheel and was like, no, keep on driving. You know, do not stop. We're not stopping. And again, like I said, my son does not believe in stuff like this. So that would have came out of nowhere for him. So, you know, there's crazy things that have happened here. You know, my parents have seen some crazy things. Well, a lot uh, of people that we've met. Grandma with has, are, like, in our old apartment. A lot of this happens in our old apartment, but some things have happened here, but not as bad. But, um, our old apartment, my grandma was staying the night, and I guess it was him and it was her and Zay, wasn't it? Mm. And, uh, she had woken up in the middle of the night, hearing my mom literally go, Mom. And my grandma was like, Yes. And, like, over and over, just like, Mom, and you're, you're, you're you were dead asleep. Like, right. Okay, right. You know, things like that. Are things that just disappear? And I mean, it doesn't bother me that much anymore. Like, it doesn't really scare me. What do you use to put on? You can use, I use this one right here. Okay, well, I'm gonna use this one. I'm gonna use that one too. I'm using Bubbly in the Anastasia palette. There's no mirror. But yeah, I mean, we would have things disappear. Like my son's iPhone disappeared for months. And then one day we came home and it was literally sitting on his bed. You know, um, keys would disappear when you're in a hurry. You know, just, just things that, that, that you're just like, I'm not going crazy. But you would feel like you were going crazy because you knew you had it and then all of a sudden it's gone and then in the next you know couple of weeks it reappears in that same spot or somewhere else that it's so obvious that it was never there you know we should do a video of like all of us just get together and just like talk about this shit well yeah i wanted to i wanted to and which is i have mentioned this on my channel before that i want to do you know a series of videos about you know ghost ghosts and encounters but i feel like, like to start that off we should talk about our own experiences Right, right. You know, my husband has a lot of experiences from when he was young that are just fascinating. And I'm pretty sure fascinating. that's what is here. <laughs> right, right. That are just fascinating that I, I do believe has followed him throughout the years because we have had something literally follow us throughout the years. Okay, I'm going to put my glasses on and then I just need to put lipstick on. Again. Okay, and then you're done. So that's been interesting. I mean, you know, I, I think at some point you just get used to it and you kind of ignore it. Like when I was feeding Bella the other day and she was, you know, playing in there, I could hear like little pitter pattering going across the floor and I called my husband and I was just like why are the dogs upstairs because if I'm in a room we like to keep an eye on the dogs because dogs you know do things that they're not supposed to so we always keep them with somebody that can watch them and uh, my husband said no they're downstairs so something was literally like running across the door and you could see it which was really weird but the dogs were not there so we don't know what it was and it was just me my husband and I think one of my other sons who was downstairs playing video games with my husband in the house so i mean that was kind of weird you know just little things that happen which you know they're not explainable you can't explain them but they're not uncomfortable i think a you lot know, of like probably because we're used to it 
right. What are you using? Hold on. With uh, Bella, though, um, I'm using Dust of Colors, uh, Mon Days, Moon Days, Moon whatever. Days, yeah, that's pretty. But, um, I'm not done, so like, just, like, ignore the fact that my lips are, like, lopsided. <laughs> but, uh, I think, like, my personal, because you were telling me about how, like, you were sitting there with Bella, and she was out of the cage, and, like, the cage bells just, like, slammed the right. thing. I wasn't scared about it. It was just, because, like I said, we've had a lot of experiences with things, so at some point, you do get used to, you know, the supernatural things that happen around you. You don't, you know, you no longer freak out when they first start happening. You know, it's kind of a little alarming, because you're just like, am I really seeing this? Is this really happening? But then, you know, when you get used to it, and you realize that's what's going like, on. Eventually, you're just like, honestly, I'm just trying to sleep. Yeah, you're not. Why are you doing this? Yeah, you're obviously not trying to harm us in any way so you know just get on with it or whatever you know but it is it is strange when it doesn't happen for a while and it normally starts happening with us around you know the September time up until you know the end of December ish and then it goes away for the rest of the month and then it comes back again between those periods so I'm not too sure like what that has to do with anything but that's normally when we start seeing a lot of activity within our family you know. I mean, I haven't gotten anything since I moved out, though. Right. Right. Jenny, I think it's just Mitch. <laughs> Could be. All right. So, now that we've talked about a few different things and probably made some people mad, I'm sorry if we did. But, Thank again, you. like we said, please go ahead and, you know, join the conversation and put it down in the description if you have any questions or if you think that, you know, you would like to hear a little bit more about stuff like that or, you know, maybe just during and Halloween. And that's the or... fun of, like, talking about conspiracy theories and ghosts and stuff that, like, we're not the type of people to be like, nope, your opinion's wrong. Like, I genuinely, like... I've had people tell right. me, like, nope, your opinion's wrong. I'm like, cool, I respect your opinion, but Absolutely. I, like, I love to hear people's like opinions. Like me, my husband, and my son, my um, youngest son, had a discussion until 3 o'clock in the morning last night about it. I mean, it was a discussion, a long discussion, and, you know, I, I have one opinion, and my husband has another opinion, and we just discussed it for a very long time, because that's what we do. But Yeah, I wasn't here for that. <laughs> <laughs> you were not here for that, but you were, the, you were part of it during lunch, which is why we came back and started talking about it. <laughs> but, yes, alright, I hope you guys enjoyed this Get Ready With Me. Again, this is my daughter Carmen if you haven't seen her in a while or if this is your first time here this is my daughter Carmen she rarely comes on my channel but I enjoy her being here if you guys enjoyed this let me know if you have any questions about anything that we use today and don't forget to put down in the description anything you have any questions about or if you want to open up a discussion about anything that we talked about oh because I'm down <laughs> all right we'll talk to you guys later bye bye